It's that time again. It's the podcast that takes your personal and professional life to a whole new level. Whether you're selling a product, selling a service, or selling yourself, one thing is for sure. You're always selling for life. All right, and welcome to another installment of the Selling for Life podcast, sponsored by Conequip Parts, a world of parts with a personal touch. This podcast is about more than just selling stuff, more than about just selling yourself. We think if you stick around, you will get a lot out of it. I'm your host, Steve, and today we are joined by business partner, sales manager, and Star Point soccer legend, Ben Krenz. Hi, Ben. Hello, everybody. You were on with us for the first couple podcasts. You annoyed the heck out of me, so I never invited you back until today because we are without Alan. I need somebody to fill in. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I feel, (laughs) man, extremely privileged to be here, Steve. Yeah, well, you should because this is an amazing podcast. We're growing. This is the 30th episode, and so therefore you are marking 30 episodes with us today. It's great. Yeah, it's really actually nice to have you. You are not only the part owner of Conoco Parts and sales manager, but my cousin. And that's just so that's right. awesome. We're down to four and a half minutes left. <laughs> and I got to get back out on the floor. <laughs> All right. I'll try to extend it a little bit. But uh, real quick, how is mm-hmm. your, how's your day going so far? Thursday it is. How is it going? Thursday is, is going well. A couple situations happen in the beginning of the week, as most do. Some hang out over the weekend from Friday and Hey, it gives me some time to uh, think about things over the weekend too, which is which is nice. Okay, very good. And you got the weekend coming up. You got any special plans? Anything fun? Well, I thought I had a, a dance to go to tonight, a loved ones dance. Oh, nice! With two of my daughters. Uh-huh. Um, my wife kindly told me, "Hey, idiot." It's yeah. tomorrow. Oh. So I got a free night tonight, so I'm kind of excited about that and haven't really thought of the weekend yet. So oh, okay. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. Sorry, I'm not very active like you are, Steve. N- yeah, okay, sure. Yep. I don't have don't have as many kids as you, Ben, so I'm not sure how much more active I could possibly be. Well, when it comes to having lots of people either in your family or at work, it requires management, right, Ben? Absolutely. <laughs> and a lot of different types of management. <laughs> well, word, word gets thrown around loosely. Yeah, well, that brings us to the topic of the day. And the topic of the day is... <laughs> managing people. Mm-hmm. So we're going to interview you today, Ben, to find out, since you are probably one of the premier managers in the world today, there's no better person to go to to talk about this topic than you... So tell me right off the top, what is your definition of management? The ability to look at situations and come up with a response that is most effective, efficient, Mm -hmm. and beneficial for all parties involved. Okay, very good. And how many people do you manage here at Conequip? I I think we're up to about 54 people right now. Okay, so that requires, obviously, some skills on your part to be able to manage them properly. What do you think are you know, some very important skills that a manager should have? I think the first skill is from experience in life, you need to learn from that. Okay. So it's as simple as that. Everybody okay. experiences different things. Right. And so you incorporate some number of things that you've experienced and apply them to your yeah notice the results from a decision that you made okay and hey you know what i've screwed up too Mm -hmm. so i'm not going to make that same decision again okay what's another important aspect or characteristic of a manager good communication is a very good one yeah that's a good one yeah employees Mm -hmm. you know they they want to be kept in the loop about things that are going on they have to be kept in the loop with projects or goals or deadlines yep what are some of the things here at con equip that requires good communication we do have some goals that we'd really like to have all the uh, parts rep attain and we do track them as well uh and it actually a lot of those metrics 
fall under the umbrella of good communication mm -hmm. and and actually also good working relationships with customers. Okay. And speaking of relationships, mm -hmm. you know, when you have dozens of people working, you're going to have personalities that clash. You're going to have situations that arise that cause some mm -hmm. controversy sometimes. So what is a way to, as a manager, to help avoid or you know be able to get through those times? Understanding that people are individuals. Mm -hmm. And everybody's at, I don't know if I want to say a different maturity level, but let's call it that, whether it's a maturity level in sales or right. if they are single at home or if they're married and they got... Uh, some other kids at, at home or maybe they're divorced and they mm -hmm. got that type of relationship to work out and work in between. Mm -hmm. uh, but being positive through this whole thing with everybody to the best of, of my ability, because I've got things that are going on as well, too, that I have to uh, maintain. But right. I think just keeping positive okay. uh, and working that relationship together positively is, is very good. You have, of course, you said like 54 people or so to manage here at Conequip. You've got quite a people to manage at home. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us a little bit yeah. about that and how that maybe yeah. affects your ability to manage here at work? Yeah, there's people at home. I've got uh, 11 children. Uh, but yes, I got 11 kids at home. One son, he is actually our oldest. My wife, Michelle, and I had him first. And then we had 10 girls in a row after him. That's crazy. It is. Uh, so if anybody thinks God doesn't exist, that's that's <laughs> not true. And mm -hmm. with that, God has a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. So, like, how do you, when it comes to managing kids, mm -hmm. I mean, even the simplest things can be pretty tough in, in getting them to do what you need them to do. For instance, how do you get 11 kids into, what do you have, like a, a van? Yeah, we have a 15-passenger van, so okay. that means we have uh, room for two friends to pick up, which is great. Our kids enjoy <laughs> that. So how do you get 11 kids into a van? Uh, you start a half hour before you when you really need to leave, and you still end up a half hour late. So <laughs> I'm still working on that management. Okay. So going on here, when it comes to, let's just say all the kids got into the van in a matter of five minutes, and they... <laughs> And it was just, I know, right? One day, maybe that will happen. Right. Let's just say they did mm -hmm. something and they were really, whether it's your kids or the people mm -hmm. that you're managing at work, when they yeah. do a good job as a manager, what should you do? Well, at Conequip here years ago, we used to tackle the sales reps for doing a good job. <laughs> yep. Okay. I'm sure you remember that, Steve. And Yeah. Uh, but I have also been given wisdom that I have taken to heart uh, from a pastor of mine said, you probably shouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> you could have some serious consequences with it. And I'm yeah. like, I'm just, you know what? You're probably right. So uh, I have heeded the wisdom of that. So since then, we do some sales contests here and there. Um, and even for, I'll give you an example that happened today, Steve. Okay. One of my other managers, Travis, mm -hmm. uh, said, hey, you're over there with uh, with Justin. He's got a really great day. Go smack him in the back of the head and tell him a good job. Okay. So I walked over to him. I gave him a kidney shot and said, you're doing a good job, buddy. Right. He was on the phone. He smiled like, thanks, dude, for recognizing. Yeah. I like that. I love acknowledging yeah. you know, for good work with people. And so it's, many it's managers feel... I love it. A lot of managers, I think... They feel it's, it's a sign of weakness in their management skills if they're going around and giving people kudos for the work that they do. But you got to remember when you were being managed, like how how nice it was to hear uh, your employer sure. tell you you're doing a good job. And it's just it just takes a second. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't right. have to hire a consultant to figure out how to get more productivity right. out of your employees. You just stink and say thank you, right. and that person is probably ready to come back the next day hmm. and do is just a, uh, you know just a good job or even better. Steve, and then, thank you for doing this podcast. You're doing a great <laughs> job, man. <laughs> thank you. Really, I'll come to work tomorrow now. Oh, thank I you. Knew it. Okay, how about some other real quick <laughs> tips of uh, management skills? Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> I think it's really important too, as you know, you show up to work just like everybody else did. Mm -hmm. You drove a vehicle that probably needs work, mm -hmm. and it's just about being real. Okay, being real with people. I make mistakes. I'm not any big superhuman by any means, mm -hmm. but 
you know, I think I do some good things and I got some some good skills and, and some good expertise and things. And mm-hmm. there's other people in my company that have more expertise in a certain area. So mm-hmm. I want to have that open mm-hmm. and have them be able to communicate uh, with us for as a whole. Mm-hmm. We can all be better. Awesome. OK, so it's good. You know, it's just a relaxed atmosphere, per se, when when everybody's just real. Right. We all wipe our butts the same. Oh, boy. OK, that that was real. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what's another tip that you have I for me? I prefer two plus. I'm afraid to ask now. <laughs> what was the next question? <laughs> how about how about three more tips? Three more tips. <sighs> okay. How about four? Give me four. Okay. Four, four more tips. Four. Three more and a bonus. Okay. Well, I really like to be decisive. I think a good leader needs to be decisive. Okay. Just have the authority mm-hmm. to make a decision. Right. Um, uh, and if you're making a decision, you know, you, you probably have some facts behind it and stuff like that. And it's, right. it's important to not be wishy washy okay. in certain areas. So, gotcha. um, you know, don't, don't flake out, just get it real. Okay. Okay. Just do it. Be decisive, right. make the decision. Let's move on. And don't goof around too much. Never. Cause, cause I mean, when they see you goof around, they don't take you as seriously. You know, I know some companies where they throw footballs around and they like put water on yeah, people's the NFL, chairs. Right. <laughs> Yeah, in the NFL, they dump water on people, too. Is yeah, that, Gatorade. Are you talking here? Okay, no. We okay. shoot Nerf darts. Two, uh, we got three more? Okay. Um, uh, well, kind of like I said earlier, in the fact that we have people that might have experience in certain other areas, I, I, I delegate. I learned this from Dave Ramsey. Simple words I learned years ago. Okay. Delegate what you hate. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Dave Ramsey, quote, delegate what you hate. Mm. So if you hate something, how well are you going to do it, Steve? Right. Right. right? So Not if you like well. hate so, wiping your butt. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm okay. Gonna, I'm going to delegate out. what you hate. So. There's other people that love doing things that I hate. Okay. So I I would say that that's the right person to delegate something to if they got the skill set. And we do that. There's called change and kind of quip. And we talk about it with every uh, employee before they come an employee um, that you have to like change here. Because if there's a skill set that you have that our company needs, by golly, you're probably going to get moved there. Uh, Mm -hmm. so I'll delegate that job to the right person. I think that's another good management thing you have to be looking for in other people. Okay. Next. Jeez, you're quick. I should have wrote these down here. Uh, (laughs) okay. Um, all right. Every workplace has issues and conflicts that come up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with them? Well, uh, some companies and some managers just kind of turn a blind eye and and, and just why do you keep it around? We'll talk about it later outside of this. Uh, turn a blind eye to it or ignore the situation and so forth. And mm-hmm. I mean, how does that make people feel? One, well, it probably doesn't make them feel like they're even appreciated or like yeah, they, they don't even want to talk to me about the issue because they don't even care about me. Right. And that might not be the case. They might just be fearful. Mm-hmm. Uh, they might not know how to correctly uh, deal with it. But Shoot, in that regard, you need to ask somebody else, another manager, hey, this is a situation, get somebody else involved. Okay. Not in a gossip situation, right. but as as looking for instruction on, on how to handle a situation, right? So, yeah. um, you know, don't ignore it. Let's just be straightway, go, you know, run to conflict when it comes up so conflict can't come in and il- infiltrate, infiltrate the rest of the uh, organization. Okay, and the bonus one? Well, <clears throat> what I what I try to do at home, uh, I try to do everywhere I go, is to set a good example. So when I'm home, uh, <clears throat> I I want to try to eat my food without putting my elbows on the t- no. I don't do that. I definitely um, <laughs> uh, I make sure I have all my chores done. Right. Okay. I try to make sure I, I help my wife in getting the kids all ready for school and stuff like that. I just mm-hmm. want to set a good example that, hey, I love you. And she loves that. So I set that good example. And uh, when I come to work, and I do suck at coming to work at the appointed time that everybody <laughs> thinks I should get here. And that is uh, it is not really good. And I need to really work on that. Okay. Um, but setting a good example all around, what, okay. whatever you're doing. If you have if you have core values and policies up on the wall and so forth like that, it, 
be a good example to make sure you're following them. Okay. And we've had multiple people in our in our company say that we really value our core values, be, and they know it because they see us doing it, and we're setting the example for it. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. Well, uh, you've been it's been a while since you've been on the podcast. So I don't know if you know, but there's another segment now, and that segment is. The inspirational message. So whatever is on your heart, no matter what it is, you <laughs> want people who are listening to mm-hmm. get something out of something you're going to say, this is time to say it. Go ahead, Ben. Well, we're a week past thanks, or we're a week past Valentine's Day. Okay. So to those married couples out there, darn it, don't make Valentine's Day a one-day thing where you recognize your spouse. Oh. They're more than just a spouse. That's your that's your lifeblood. Oh. It's your love. Make it happen. Ben, never say I love you too much. I am so impressed. Thank you. I am so impressed that you had such a nice inspirational message like that. That's great. I love you too, Steve. You're my cousin, man. That does it for our 30th Selling for Life podcast. (laughs) Oh, did they? You can check out our website at (laughs) sellingforlife.com. You can email us at contact at sellingforlife.com. So until next time, remember, whether you're selling office supplies or you're trying to coax 11 kids into a 15-passenger van within an hour, one thing is for sure, you are always selling for life.